Buddy Guy. Thank you. Sorry, buddy. It's a great pleasure. Thank you. Nice to see you. Thank you. Welcome. Maybe we should uh, introduce your great band here before we get going. Why not? Uh, we got uh, Greg Arzab on bass. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Scott Holt on rhythm guitar. Also play lead. 
and formerly with the late great Mr. Muddy Waters, Ray Allison on drums. That sounded pretty darn good. <laughs> You've done this before. Uh, kind of. You know, <laughs> when, you, when you get my age, I think you have done uh, quite a few things with music. <laughs> I would say so. Um, congratulations on the new album, Feels Like Rain. Thank you very much. And uh, that's just going to be, I guess, getting to people in the next, uh, next couple of weeks. just been released. Yeah, well, that was one of the tunes I wrote when I just came on with you with uh, a superstar. That's to your wife. Uh, not only to my wife, I think uh, it's to all women. You know, I got sisters, nieces. Once I had a mother, she's passed away. And I think without good-looking women, I don't think we could play good-sounding good, good, good music. Good sounding music. <laughs> well, that's a but, pretty nice tribute. She's a superstar. It's a nice thing to say. Yeah, about, well, about I was uh, 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 kind of talking about all women. You know, uh, I would hate to have come here tonight and play and didn't see nothing but men out there. You know, what? <laughs> Well, there are no uh, women, there'll be no, too many men, you know, and yeah. uh, it's no old saying, we can't get along with them, but we sure can't do without them. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you made this album uh, when, buddy? Just uh, in the latter part of last year, the middle of last year? Uh, in May. Actually, we came out of uh, uh, um, a Far East tour, and uh, I saw Bonnie in Australia, and we did a television show there, and I asked her, because she played, and she was so heavily scheduled, she said, I don't think I'll be able to make it. So while we were there in the studio, um, all of a sudden, they say, Bonnie on her way. And this I'm is Bonnie like, Raitt. Yeah. And I'm like saying, are you kidding me? She walks in. She said, well, you asked me, man. I'm here. <laughs> yeah. When did you first meet Bonnie? I met Bonnie before she got famous. Actually, I met Bonnie the first time uh, the Canadian people ever let me know that I was good enough to be a professional musician, which I owe a lot of thanks here because uh, the gentleman that she had tonight, Mr. Richard Flo, he brought me to Canada in 1967, my first time I took a vacation from my tow truck driving job and came to Canada, and I haven't been back since, so I owe a big <laughs> thanks to the Canadian people. Well, the Canadian people owe a big thanks to you. Thank you. Thank you. You've got, you've got a bit of a second home here. Now, what I should mention before we go any further is tonight is going to be uh, kind of a special treat and something a little bit different because you like to work kind of loose. And we don't have any kind of set list here. You're going to just do stuff as, as you feel like doing it. And uh, for people that may not know a lot about your music and, and your past, it'll be sort of a clinic, too. And I think people will find out you know, where you came from, where your music came from, and where a lot of music uh, that a lot of rock and roll bands and, and musicians play today, where it came from. Well, I'm loving every minute of it. You know, I came prepared for this because I, I said uh, this city, this town, and these people is the one that made me make up my mind because I was always doubting myself, still do a bit, you know, but uh, with the help of the Canadian people, I'm here today, and hopefully that I can keep them as my fans as long as I'm around. Well, I don't see a problem there. You're live <laughs> right across Canada tonight, so let's have some fun. We'll take a quick break and come back with more Buddy Guy Thank in you. just a moment. Now we continue with Buddy Guy, live on Command Performance.
I say something to you And I don't care how you feel You just don't realize You got yourself a good deal I say She's 19 years old And she got way just like a baby child Well, you know nothing Nothing I can do to please a little girl People, I'm just trying to make this little woman feel satisfied So why she going? She tell me where she been. She'll start a conversation. That don't have no end. I say she's uh, she's 19 years old, and she got ways like a baby child. Nothing I can do to please the little girl. People, you know, I'm just trying to make this little woman feel satisfied.
I'ma say something to you. Now don't care if you get mad. You about the best thing, woman. She got ways like a baby child. Oh, you know, nothing I can do to please you, woman. Oh, yes, I'm trying to make this little woman feel satisfied. <laughs> I'm loving every minute of it. All right. <laughs> Buddy Guy, she's 19 years old. It's a Muddy Waters tune, right? Right. On your new album. Yes. I uh, did a lot of uh, different stuff on this album. I did a Marvin Gaye, uh, Ray Charles, and a James Brown. And uh, I just want to let the fans know that uh, if you pick up the album and think I've forgotten about you, and I come in with 19 years old to let you know I haven't forgotten about the Muddy Waters right. and the stuff that uh, I'm very familiar with. I've dedicated my life to it, and uh, I'll never will forget it. How did you meet Muddy Waters? <laughs> That's uh, uh, kind of strange. Actually, I don't guess I would be here today if it, it wasn't for that meeting Muddy Waters. I got uh, stranded in Chicago. I went there. My mother had a stroke in Louisiana, and I went there looking for just uh, common label work, and I didn't ever think I would be a guitar player. And uh, uh, this stranger picked me up and drug me in on Old Destroyer, and I went up and sung two songs. Matter of fact, he gave me a glass of wine. I was my third day without e eating. And I was just trying to get a dime to call my mom, and uh, I played the two songs, and evidently the uh, uh, audience liked it. And uh, when I came off, they wanted to know who was who was I. And I was like saying, just I'm just hungry, you know. and. Uh, Someone called him, and he got out of bed, and when I got ready to leave the place, didn't know whether I was going north, east, south, or west. And somebody starts slapping on me and says, I'm muddy, and I said, oh, my God, I'm getting mugged. They was calling him mud. They, they didn't call him, and I said, <laughs> <laughs> And I finally heard him, he said, I'm muddy waters. Are you hungry? And I said, oh, if you muddy waters, I'm full. You know, <laughs> I don't need nothing to eat. And uh, that started it all, and uh, we had a long conversation, and he took care of me that night. And, uh, told me don't think about going back to Louisiana, and I haven't been back other than visits since. And this is probably, what, 1955? 58. 58? Well, you finna make me a little older than that. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, hey, I'm not as no, bad as the I guy in the States. I went to Chicago uh, September 25th, 1957, and, and somewhere around mid-58 when I met them. And what, what happened from there what, in terms of your relationship and, and you know, working with, with Muddy Waters and learning from him? Well, he found out that I could play the Muddy Waters music. And uh, for, for instance, one example, Leonard Chess called him in once to do an acoustic album. I don't know if you have the album. And I said he wanted him to send him to Mississippi and get some older guy who could really play the old-fashioned acoustic stuff. And he said, be ready tomorrow. Uh, I got him. And I walked in the studio, and it was all like making fun of me until it, they started the tapes to roll, and then they had to stop it for an hour and want to know who was I. And uh, for an example, they printed the thing in the, uh, uh, what was that, beer boat? last month or something like that that I was 90 that's years old. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> You're not 90. I was playing like I was 90, though, because that's what I learned. You know, I'm, I'm self-taught. No one never s sit down and showed me how to play the guitar right, and uh, I don't read music, so I hold my uh, right hand uh, wrong. I hold the pick wrong. I also uh, play very hard. I break a lot of strings in a, in a night's time when I play, and by me learning in that way, it's kind of it's very hard for me to turn around now and do it right. 
So I just stick to what I do best, and thanks to the Canadian people, I've been coming up here every time. Well, it sounds, sounds pretty right to Canadians. As a matter of fact, um, before we go any further, I'd like to bring out a special guest here who is, uh, is going to present you with a little bit of something here, buddy. It's Thank you. Mr. Bob Jamison from G BMG Records Canada. Buddy, uh, every party has to have some gifts and some surprises, and uh, it's our great pre I do that all the time. It, this is only live, so we yeah. don't have to worry. We can cut this out. Let's start again, buddy. It's my great privilege and honor to present you with what I understand is your first gold record ever, and I think it's only fitting that it should be in Canada, the country that has supported you and you've supported us over all these years, and we love your music and we love what you're doing, and this is your gold record for Damn Right I've Got the Blues. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, if I had to get one, I would prefer it being here. Because it's, it's <laughs> seriously, I told you in the first place, uh, and, and I'm happy to have Mr. Richard Flo here, here with me. If, it's a, if, if it wouldn't bother you, I would like for him to come Absolutely. up. Because he was a, Mr. Richard, Richard, are you still there? Would you come up? Would you like to come up and say something? Because you was the one responsible. Mr. Richard Flo here brought Richard me Flo here. I owe you all the thanks in the world. You know, you went out of your way and came to my house and uh, uh, like a year before that, and uh, I uh, taken you to the Prairie Band Club and uh, introduced you as my manager, and he said, come on in, Richard, because I've been looking for you. I'm trying to book them boys, which was Buddy Guy and Junior Wells. And, <laughs> and at the meantime, you was there to bring us to the mirror post, well, and thank you. I owe you a million. You've always uh, played great music, and you've always played great music in this country, and you're half Canadian, whatever you do. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> thank, you very much. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. We'll take a short break on Command Performance and be back with more live Buddy Guy in just a moment. Welcome back to Command Performance, live from Manta Eastern Sound. Here again, Buddy Guy. I came home this morning, and oh, what a shock. When I found out my key, no longer fit my life, but oh, baby, you just go right back out there where you been, but while you were slipping out, someone else was slipping in. I thought it was your fool that you could count on. One was right there when no one else was at home but oh babe I think I found myself a new friend But why you were stepping out Someone else was slipping in Now you know y'all can help me say that if you want someone else to slip it in I cry your heart out It don't mean nothing to me I'm a brand new man, you can plainly see. I got a new way of walking, and I'm wearing my hat. This big smile on my face, you didn't put it there. I got a new way of wearing my hat. This big smile on my face, you didn't put it there. Just go right back out there where you been. Help me. But why you were slipping out? Everybody. 
No, y'all can sing a little better than that now. You got to do a little better than that now. And while you were slipping out. Somebody else was in me. Yeah, that's, what, that's the way it's supposed to sing. Don't talk. And while you were slipping out. Slipping out. I like that. Cause why you were slipping out? Somebody else was slipping in. Oh yeah, they're getting better. I hear somebody crooning that. And why you were slipping out? Somebody else was slipping in. All right, let's do it like this now. Come on. Why you were slipping out? That's what you call having church. We can have church right here. Now let me that. Now keep it right. Keep them hands. Keep them hands right there. Now let me say.
came on this morning, and oh, what a shock. When I found out my key, no longer fit my life, oh, baby. I think I found myself a new friend. And why you were slipping out? Somebody else was slipping in. I heard somebody say somebody else. You're right too. And why you were slipping out? Somebody else was slipping in. <laughs> How was that? Uh, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I'm kind of hyped up now. I had to get them to help me sing some behind <laughs> the gold record, which is, uh, I, I, it, I, I just can't believe it, you know, because actually uh, people, <laughs> thank you, uh, uh, people like the late, great Muddy Waters, Howlin' Wolf, Sonny Boy Williams, and Lil' Walter, and people like that, if there's such thing as they're looking down, I would love for them to see the big smile on their face because blues has been in the back room, in the back of the bus so long till we had gotten to the point where didn't, we didn't think the doors would open and never let us out. And you know, you'd always have to go to the record shops and go down through them, pick up a record and wonder who this is and hopefully someone would play it and catch somebody else's ears and let them hear it and then they would say, oh, I like that because they was cutting us off from things like great people like you doing, giving you an op giving an opportunity for us to play and be heard and be seen, and it's getting better. But they didn't they didn't enjoy this like I would have liked to have seen Muddy Waters. I saw his face in, on television the year he passed, which is the same year that Michael Jackson won all the Grammys, and they flashed his face up there as passed away. And I remember what my mom told me before she passed away. She said, if you got any flowers for me, son, give them to me while I'm alive so I can smell them. I don't want them when I'm dead. I don't smell them, you know. So yeah. <laughs> most, most blues people get more published and more well-known after they pass away than they do while they're living for some strange reason. But I'm going to try to do something about that, hopefully, if I can hang on. You are. Long <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. You know, one of the ironic things about, about what you, you mentioned, uh, about blues not getting the recognition and being in, in the back seat for so long, one of the really ironic things is, is that one of the reasons I think that happened was because so many rock and roll musicians were influenced by what you and Muddy Waters and B.B. King and all these people did and Howlin' Wolf, and then created their own music, and it kind of pushed what you guys were doing aside. And it yeah. doesn't seem that you were ever really bitter about that. No. But... I mean, would you acknowledge that that's more or less what happened? It, not more or less. It's, it's really what happened. What happened if it... <laughs> I was trying what to be happened, diplomatic. Well, what happened if it don't be for the great friends like uh, Eric Clapton, the Rolling Stones, Jeff Beck, the late Stevie Ray Vaughan, and all these people like this, I, I don't think uh, we would be exposed as much as we are now. Actually, the Rolling Stones came over after they started getting so famous and they had created a television show in America called Shindig. And they refused to come unless they bring Howlin' Wolf and the Muddy Waters. And America was saying, like, who is Muddy Waters? And they're saying, you mean tell me you don't know who's Muddy Waters? And we named after one of his famous records, which is Rolling Stone. And they were like saying, okay, we'll bring him on. And then we began to know who's Muddy. And they'd taken a lot of us out on tour with them. Uh, Ike and Tina Turner, B.B. King, Billy Preston, and quite a few people. We owe a lot of thanks to those people. They did more than a lot of the record companies did for us. At the same time, they owe you a big thanks. <laughs> I mean, that's what turned them on in the beginning. Well, uh, now we begin together to play a lot, play a lot together on albums, so I guess we're thanking each other in that respect. Right. Why do, you think it, why do you think it is, you know, with the experience that you've had and working with a lot of these people, why do you think all those skinny white kids in England picked up on what you guys were doing and started to reinterpret it and make their own music from it, but be inspired by it? Why, why did it happen from those guys, do you think? I think, uh, I think it happened to to them just like it happened to me. I just picked it up and learned it, and that's what they did. They didn't steal nothing. You don't, you don't steal music. You know, they played, in the, and uh, Jimi Hendrix had to leave America to go prove this wah-wah pedal would work. 
And when he left and went over there, they recorded him. America was saying this just wasn't nothing but noise. And it's just one of those things that they liked it and they recorded it and it exploded. And a lot of people popped the question to me, do you have to live the life of a blues player, of some of the blues players much older than me, including myself, like in poverty, uh, uh, eating every other day, uh, one pair of shoes for three years or so. And I put it to you like this, if that's what it takes to play blues, look out, we're going to have quite a few in the next few years if things don't change, because a lot of people out of work now are going to be hungry. <laughs> <laughs> So maybe some light at the end of the tunnel with all this. Some, well, I don't some think that's true. Players. I don't think that's true. I think uh, it's, it's what happened is I, I just made that comment for an example, but I think if you love what you do, I, I, when I learned how to play guitar, it wasn't Eric Clapton or the Rolling Stones. I could look up and say, I'm finna be here talking to you and can take my band out and they could go back and pay their rent and buy some clothes and ride around in a bus and sleep. It was just the love of the music, and then all of a sudden in the 60s it went to paying off for uh, the rock guitars and, and, the, and I guess a few of the blues guitar players like B.B. King and all of them. And now a young person, young lady or a young man can say, well, I want to be a guitar player. I could make a million if I'm good. But I didn't see that. So I, I, it was just the love of music. I played more nights for nothing, and I think I ever will be able to play for something <laughs> because uh, a many nights, man, I played and come out in the red because Muddy Waters and Howlin' Wolf would say, I'll, I'll be by the club, but you got to buy a drink. And I was making like $4, and they drank up $10 worth of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take a break when we come back. Buddy, would you show us some, uh, some different styles of guitar playing? The, the last time we met, you, you did that for me and, sure, and talked about some happy. of the people that you've worked with and some of the different styles of guitar playing. I'll be more than happy We'll to. look forward to it with Buddy Guy in just a moment. Thanks. Command Performance continues live from Manta Eastern Sound. Here again, your host, Steve Warden. We're back now with Buddy Guy, and Buddy has been kind enough to uh, offer to maybe play a little bit of different kind of guitar for us and, and talk about some of the people that he's worked with and some of the different guitar styles that have uh, been played over the years. Who, who was the first guitar player that you were influenced by, do you think? I think Lightning Hopkins and uh, um, uh, I was, you know, like in, in my mid teenagers before I would know what electric lights were. So, <laughs> you know, guitars and things come very late to me in, in that respect. But when my parents finally got one of those phonographs with the radio on it, Country and Western coming out of uh, Texas. And uh, at that time, most radio stations in the South would play spiritual country and western, jazz, and blues. And I would hear Lightning Hopkins and T-Bone, uh, I think, before, and Lana Johnson and people like that before uh, the B.B. King, them, uh, uh, Arthur Crudup, and uh, things like that. Right. And then out steps uh, John Lee, B.B., and Muddy, them, and it just blew my mind. You know, actually, I, I, I was pretty good in grade school until I heard them, and then my grades started going down. <laughs> <laughs> So you, did, you, did you start to emulate some of those guys and, and kind of copy the styles? No, or? I was using a rubber band, and I didn't know what a guitar was. You know, I did, you know without electric lights, you know, you know, my parents weren't even thinking about a guitar, man. I, I used to uh, take a rubber band in, uh, in Louisiana, uh, mosquitoes would take you out of the room. If it is no, uh, naturally, no air conditioning, no fans. So the window was the only thing we had, and my mom screamed while I was, like, in trouble because I found out it sounded better than the rubber band, so I would strip <laughs> it and try and make guitars. And that what got me going at, at a guitar, even before I knew what a guitar was. Right. Mm -hmm. And when did you get your first guitar? Well, my dad bought me one, I think about 16 and a half or something like that. It had two strings on it. And then I, I, had, I made it to high school. And I went to Baton Rouge, and I was staying with my older sister with two strings, and a stranger passed by and said, son, I bet if you had a guitar, you would learn how to play. I said, well, probably so. He said, what are you doing tomorrow? And I didn't even pay the guy no attention. I said, I sit here every evening. The next evening, I was sitting there. He stopped and said, you ready? I said, ready for it? He said, I'm going to buy you a guitar. And I just followed him. And he bought me this uh, six-string harmony F hole, and he came on back to my sister's house, and I was, I was making this noise, you know, and... <laughs> My sister came in and said, what's this, a country boy and a country man with some whiskey and a guitar? So let's get in the car and go to the country of my dad's house. And we went out there, and strangely enough, that guy grew up with my dad as kids. Really? Uh, and I haven't seen him since, and he passed away, I think, before, uh, 
before my dad, after my dad. I, I still owed him the money. I never get a chance to pay him because I left after I learned how to play. Then when I went to Chicago and turned out to be a professional musician, I wanted to repay him more than once, and I never did find him. Can you demonstrate the first uh, the thing I learned how to play? The first, yeah. How do, that the first thing good. I learned yeah. how to play was this. Well, my mama don't lie to me. Just to stay out all night long. Thing. I, I, was, <laughs> I was asleep. My sister had ran me out of the house, and I woke up playing that, and I thought I would never play it again, so I kept my fingers in that position for about six hours. <laughs> 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 and I walked to every friend I know, and in the country, if you know what walking to the next friend's house in the country is, it's a long ways. Yeah, so I... Your fingers were kind of numb. Well, it had uh, a, a stripe through my, my <laughs> number one finger that had stayed for quite a while because I didn't, I, you know, I didn't think I would find it again. I didn't have no one to show me, so I just said I wear it out as I got it. Did, when did you realize that, that you actually had some talent and had some special gifts? In 1967 when I came here for Mariposa Blues Festival. Otherwise, I, I was driving a tow truck drink. Are I'm you serious? Si I'm serious. I, I was in Chicago, and I would go and make the records with Muddy and the rest of them, but when, when uh, Mr. Flo here brought me here, that's when I realized who was Buddy Guy, and I still didn't sit in and just sitting in. I got to go home tonight and pinch myself and still, <laughs> man, because <laughs> I don't, you know, I, uh, it's so many great musicians. You know, it's it's uh, it's it's not easy to get a gold record. It's not easy to come to Canada and please a lot of people playing. It's it's very hard. You know, a lot of people look at it and think it's like. Well, you got it made. You don't have to do nothing but smile and play three licks, and, and that's it. There's more to it than that. It's a lot of hard work. You know, I, I, uh, I'm in the nights I don't sleep because I, tonight I will go home and say, when did I make everybody happy, you know, by playing a few songs I did. And if you love it like I love it, you're a nut. So, uh, <laughs> so, so I just try to do the best I can. I don't want to be the best in town. I just want to be the best until the best come around. Sounds pretty good. <laughs> maybe we can uh, touch on a few more styles and stuff uh, later on, but if you wouldn't mind, maybe play another live song with the band. Sure. What do you want to do? Uh, I better go back up the next my band, because if I break off now, you know, if I turn around, they say, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Okay. okay, buddy guy. Thank you.
Again, live from Manta Eastern Sound, here's Buddy Guy on Command Performance. say yeah well look at here the Egypt a woman told my mother just before I was born say you got a boy child coming gonna be a, a son of a gun he gonna make pretty women Running, jumping, shout. And the world gonna know, yes, people. What's this all about? Cause I'm here. Play a little funky for me, band. And everybody knows I'm here. You know I'm your coochie coochie man. And everybody knows I'm here. I got a black cat bone. I got a, a mojo too. I got me a, a John the Conqueror. I want to a mess with you. Lord, I want to make you a little girl. By my hand, 
And the world gonna know, yes, people, that I'm your hoochie, coochie man, cause I'm here. And everybody knows I'm here. Ah, oh, shucks. You know I'm your hoochie coochie man. And uh, everybody knows I'm here. Now look at here, fella. Play the blues for me now. They can smell it. Watch this. Hear a lot of buzzing. Sound like my little honeybee. Yeah. Look at here. the world making honey people and now she's coming back uh, uh, home to me
That's fine. Thank you. Buddy Guy, I take it you've worked out on that a few times. <laughs> yeah, well, um, quite a few, I would say. Quite a few. Because to regards to how hard I work on that, you know, uh, some of these younger people don't know what they miss. They got, they won't have a video on them, but I got it. You know, I own the largest blues club in Chicago. If you come there, you can find it. I, I got it while this guy's singing Mojo working. It's just like sawing with a sewing machine, making stitches. It doesn't miss. <laughs> yeah. Now, I should mention here, because I think you're too modest to do it, uh, that you've made this excellent new album called Feels Like Rain. This is what it looks like. That's what it sounds like, something <laughs> like that. Thank and, you. Uh, on, on the last record, Damn Right, I've Got the Blues, you had a, a stack of people guesting on it from Clapton to Jeff Beck, and uh, you've got a whole bunch more people on this one. Are you beating people off with a stick these days in terms of people who want to get on and, and play on your records? I don't think it's that. You know, actually, my dream uh, came true, uh, uh, got to be two weeks or so ago tomorrow. I made records with Sonny Boy Williamson, uh, 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 John Lee, uh, Big Mama Thornton. Well, naturally, you know, with Muddy Water, Little Walter, Sonny Boy, Jimmy Reed. And B.B. Uh, King, I was like saying, forget it. This guy's, you know, he don't need any help. And he, uh, I did a tour with him last summer, and he said, would you do an album with me, buddy? I said, it's, I just thought he was joking. And uh, three weeks ago tomorrow, I did an album with B.B. King. So as a kid, I was like, what can you ask for in a dream that's watching B.B. King play the guitar? And uh, you wake up, and B.B.'s asking you to play with him. And he's like saying, all the money in the world couldn't replace that, so far as I'm concerned, because that's just the way I felt about his playing and, uh, and uh, quite a few more people playing. So um, money all the money and the women in the world couldn't make me feel <laughs> like I felt when, when he asked me to play with him. Are you, you know, sure about that? I'm, I'm, qu I'm quite sure. You know, it's, it's, it's well, you know, uh, let me clear myself now. It's, it's like, you know, you, you say I'm in love with my girlfriend or my wife or whatever, and there's a love for her and there's a love for your mom, and, and they say don't come between, but that, those are two different types of love. You know, that motherly love will never be the wife love, because if you come on with no clothes on, your wife go ask you where you been. If you come on with no clothes on with your mama, she gonna say, wrap yourself up. <laughs> you know. So. <laughs> so I declare myself on that. <laughs> I'm getting a signal to, to go to a, a, another commercial here in a moment, but would you play us two? We've got maybe a minute and a half, two minutes. What about uh, uh, Buddy Guy doing B.B. King? Show us how... how, how how B.B. sort of bends the notes and, and that style of playing. Okay. She spreads her wings. That might be a little buddy guy. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Might be some of those licks from way back in 1950s what I'm playing now, you know. He's playing. That's beautiful. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I love you. You don't want me to do another one with this? The band? This is a real treat, buddy. I really appreciate this. Thank you so much. I uh, wish we could play uh, longer. I'm beginning to feel like I'm in the club playing. <laughs> you know, well, this, this audio, this we're, audience, this, we're off the air in about 15 minutes, but you can go beyond that if you want. Uh, uh, well, we'll, we'll talk is... about it. <laughs> we'll take a break and be back with more Buddy Guy on Command Performance. Live from Manta Eastern Sound, Command Performance continues. Here again, your host... Steve Warden. We're almost out of time, and we want to have some more music from Buddy Guy and his band, so we'll get right to the uh, studio audience questions, if we, don't, uh, if we don't mind. Who do we have up here first? My name is Lisa. Hi, Lisa. And I was just wondering, do you have any other passions other than blues music? I know your brother is a chef, and do you like to cook? Uh, yes, I, I like to do things. Uh, I like uh, uh, outings. I, I like uh, uh, being left alone about the guitar <laughs> when, I'm, when, I'm not, when I'm not playing. I love cars. I got some classic cars, and uh, that was my dream when I was a little kid. And uh, uh, Eric and uh, Beck and myself got a lot in common with that. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. Hi, this is uh, Gareth. Hi, uh, hi buddy. Hi. Um, the late, great Steve Ray Vaughan was greatly influenced by m your music. Uh, what was his influence on you? Uh, 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 so much, I, it's, it'll take me a long time to explain, man, because I tell every musician I know now and later that if, if you think you get too old to learn, you lost. And Stevie and all of the young musicians learns me a lot. Stevie played something. He was the only guy I know that played right-handed, sounded like Alba King playing left-handed. I saw you playing Stevie's guitar last year. A big pun? I saw you playing Stevie's guitar last year. Yes, I still got it. Actually, uh, I, I, uh, on my club in Chicago, I'm collecting guitars from all of my friends. I was with this brother at uh, Eric's uh, Abbott Hall concert two weeks ago and I said I need a Stevie's guitar he said you already got it. I said no I want one he played and yeah. I, I, I'm looking forward to that in, in the near future great well my question is what do you do when you get the low down dirty blues I go <laughs> <laughs> when you got them <laughs> well you, you 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 don't you know actually you don't let that get you down you know that's when you begin to if you write any lyrics at all you think about what crosses your mind at that point and a lot of things cross your mind. And then a lot of blues writers write from what you hear, see, and, and go around. So I, if I'm at an airport, if I got to low down dirty blues and I hear another guy hollering, but I got to leave my family, I'm going home to my family, I get ideas from that. So I just keep an open mind on uh, my downs and other people down. Because when you're down, you're not down by yourself. Okay, not so just do, the low down blues. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thanks for the questions. And, buddy, uh, you'll be playing uh, here in Toronto uh, tomorrow night at the Spectrum. Then uh, you're in Montreal on Friday. Right. And in Ottawa on Saturday. Right. And, and then what about the rest of Canada? When, then when are they going to see Right you? back in Montreal. We were supposed to be uh, in Quebec City, but something happened that counts in Montreal taking it. That's why I'm so crazy about Canada, man. You know, just, uh, I thought I had a day off to say, no. Come on back here and play. And I lo I'm loving every minute of it. Yeah, well, you got to come back and play right across the country. Listen, uh, if, if it's tomorrow, it wouldn't be too soon for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this has been a real pleasure. Thank you for doing this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. And would you, uh, would you do one more song yes, for us? Yes, what do you want to do? Yeah. This, I believe this is a song from the latest album, Buddy Guy.
just as country as I can be. I said I'm a country man. I'm just as country as I can be. You may get me out of the country, people, but you never will get the country out of me. I'm green as a pool table. People, you know I'm twice as grand. I'm green as a pool table. People, you know I'm twice as grand. Enough. Maybe you know I had something out of here. I love it like I do my life. Ain't that loving my guitar? I love it like I do my child. I should be down on now with you, baby. I'm gonna tell you the reason why. Oh.
Thank you.